Hi, I'm Steve Dale here at the ACVIM Forum and Canadian VMA Convention in Montreal, Canada. Dr. Mike Davis is at Oklahoma State University College of Veterinary Medicine and is in the Department of Veterinary Physiology. And you are working with uh, sled dogs in a very unusual way. I want to talk about that and then talk about the greater influences for that. I explain what you're doing. Well, we've got a number of projects that we do with sled dogs. Sled dogs represent probably the greatest endurance athletes that we have on the face of the earth. And so from a physiology standpoint, they represent the greatest capacity of mammalian physiology to adapt to an extreme stress. And in their case, it's being able to perform strenuous exercise for days at a time at levels that exceed any comparable uh, exercise that we've seen in even the best human athletes. Um, that type of exercise requires adaptations on multiple levels. And these adaptations occurred to, to a varying degree of success despite the fact that they have very, very similar physiology to human beings. So, as do all dogs. Exactly. And, and no matter how you feel about sled dog racing, I mean, it, it, it occurs, and therefore it occurred to you, and, and you notice something interesting about these sled dogs. Well, the sled dogs have, we're, we're studying two different aspects of sled dogs. Um, number one, their metabolic capacity. Um, they can sustain metabolic uh, throughput through the working muscles, of four to five times the, uh, the best human endurance athlete. Um, so how they manage to do that uh, day in and day out is of tremendous interest because the individual components of the muscle are so very similar to humans and the sled dogs are just simply using them much, much better than humans are able to much do. Much more efficiently. So uh, how would that help if, if we can understand how the dogs are physiologically able to do this? Well, we, if we can understand how the sled dogs adapt their muscles to the type of exercise that they do, and it's, it's not extremely powerful exercise, it's just very long, very uh, slow but enduring exercise, and they burn a tremendous amount of fat while they're doing it. That's a, something that we would absolutely love to be able to teach human muscle to do. If the sled dogs have all the same molecules and the molecules are so similar to humans, but the sled dogs are able to activate them in a much more efficient manner, it throws out the possibility that we can do the same thing for human muscle. And if we can do the same thing for human muscle, the, the benefits to the human population are enormous, not just for athletes. Uh, it would be great if we could make humans be able to perform athletic feats of comparable nature to sled dogs. What would, uh, what another, what would another application be? Another application would be, ironically, at the completely opposite end of the spectrum. We're talking about people who are suffering from type 2 diabetes and who tend to be obese. And the reason they are obese and the reason they have type 2 diabetes is because their muscle is specifically unable to use fat. So we have really a population of humans at the opposite end of the athletic spectrum that could still benefit from the research because the bottom line is that they have a deficiency in their muscles being able to use fat. We have an example of muscle cells that are very, very similar to humans that are able to use fat in an extraordinarily high level. If we can understand how the sled dogs make their muscle cells do that, we have an angle to get human muscle to do that and reverse obesity and type 2 diabetes. So it's a very exciting uh, possibility that, that uh, the sled dogs are contributing uh, to the scientific community. Dr. Davis, thank you very much. You can learn more about the latest in cutting-edge medicine at acvim.org.